tonight's words or the word for tonight is the word that is meant to encourage you in the ministry of the word and prayer. Hallelujah. It's very much important for us to know where we stand concerning the word and prayer. It's very much important for us to know what, what, what is our purpose. Because when the word and prayer are neglected, our purpose also fails. Hallelujah. It fades and falls and fall on the wayside. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, I thank you. I give you the glory, the honor, the praise and adoration that you are the same God who changes not. You are the same God who speaks. We thank you, Father Mutsumwanga. Urubwane, you are the same God who never changes. Even tonight, Heavenly Father, I am dependent upon you to synchronize me with the heavens, to release the now word, the word in season. And I thank you, mighty God, that Father Mutsumwanga, you are framing my tongue to release the words, mighty God, that you want me to release. I thank you, mighty God, that Father, you have given me, mighty God, Heavenly Father, the spirit, mighty God, of wisdom, counsel, understanding, the tongue of the learned to speak the word in season to those hearts that are weary. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Uh, I'm glad that I'm ministering before the thousands and thousands. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. I'm glad that, uh, you know, I love what the Bible says that way two or three are gathered in your name, in his name, is in our midst. And I know that God is here. This afternoon, something happened. I had planned to share something else. As I was waiting for the children at school, the Holy Spirit changed everything. Hallelujah. And I was excited, and I'm still excited about what God is about to share with us tonight. Hallelujah. Let us go to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 6. We'll read it from verse 1 to 4. And we'll also read Acts chapter 10 until we stop. Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 up to 4. It's read that it said, Now in those days when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in their daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among, your, among you seven men of, of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Hallelujah. Say so that the, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So we see here there was a contention in the church, the early church. The early church used to have what you call in today's terms a feeding scheme. And in that feeding scheme, feeding scheme, there was a complaint that a certain particular, a set, certain section of the society was being overlooked in favor of the other section of the society. And that section was, was what you call the Hellenist. They complained uh, against the Hebrews that they are not given the fair share of food. And that was an administrative matter because the disciples, for sure, they were not really highly involved. And also, they did not choose people according to the direction of the Holy Spirit to overlook the matter. And what I love about this is that when the, when the complaint was raised to them, there is one important factor that they alluded to. They said, we cannot leave the ministry of the word and prayer and attend to tables. In other words, we cannot leave that which seems to please people 
and ignore that which God has called us to do, which is the word of God. Amen. So we, we, this has enlightened something in our spirit man. That how many times do we do that which looks like it's important to God and ignore the very core business that God has called us to do, which is the ministry of the word and prayer, because that's where the direction is. Hallelujah. You can never, ever hear from God if you ignore the ministry of the word and prayer. It is not possible for you to function in the will of God if the ministry of the word and prayer is neglected by you. We can do everything that looks like important. I mean, here, Pop, here, here the disciples are saying, he say, they're saying, we they say, oh, then the 12th summoned the multitude of the disciples said, it is not desirable that we leave the word of God and serve tables. It is not desirable that we leave the word of God and please people. In other words, the moment you are in the ministry of the word and prayer, your first responsibility will be to do what? To please God before people. That one, need to write it down. You will need to do what to please God. How do, uh, how do we please God? We need to understand. We need to understand that when where God is involved, his purpose will always come first. Hallelujah. Are we together? Where God is involved, his purpose will always come first. And also, let us read here 2 Timothy 2, 1. 2, 1 up to 2. It says, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Check the, the, the word that I'm looking for. That No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he may please he whom is listed him as a soldier. In other words, when you are involved in warfare, because our spiritual life is warfare, there are things that we don't entangle ourselves with and ignore the ministry of the word and prayer. Hallelujah. What, you know, as I'm sharing this word with you, I want you to ask yourself this question. Where do I stand in the ministry of the word and prayer? Where do I stand? What word is ruling my spirit this week? Which word in the Bible or which section in the Bible am I meditating upon? When I'm feeling in a particular way, which word in the Bible correct me? Where do I go in the Bible? Because the ministry of the word will automatically lead you to prayer. Amen? Let us go deeper. Acts chapter 10. We're going to read a lengthy scripture. Very long scripture. Acts chapter 10. We're going to start from verse 1. It said, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian regiment. A devout man who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, when you observed, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said to me, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa to, and, and send for Simon, whose name is Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tenor whose house is by the sea, a beach house. He will tell you what you must do. And when the angel who spoke to him has departed, Cornelius chose two of his household servants and a devout soldier from among those who waited on him continuously. So when he had explained all these things to them, 
He, he sent men to Joppa. Verse 9. The next day as they went on their journey and drew near city, Peter went up on the housetop to pray. About the sixth hour, then he became very hungry and wanted to eat. But while he made ready, he fell into a trance and he saw heaven open and an object like a sheet, like a great sheet bound at the four corners, descending to him and led down to the earth. In it were all kinds of four-footed animals of the earth, wild bees, creeping things, the birds of the air, and a voice came to him and said, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, O Lord, for I have never eaten anything uncommon or unclean. And a voice spoke to him, and again, the second time, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. This was done three times, and the object was taken up into heaven. Now, while Peter wondered within himself what was his vision, which he made, which he had seen meant, behold, the men who were who had been sent from Cornelius made an inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. And they and they called and asked whether Simon who sent him was Peter was lodging there. While Peter thought about the vision, the spirit said to him, Behold, three men are seeking you. Arise, therefore, go down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the man whom we have had, had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Yes, I am he whom you seek. For what reason have you come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man who, see, who fears God, has a good, who has a good reputation among the nation of the Jews, was divinely instructed by the holy angels to summon you to his house to hear words from you. Then he invited them and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. This is what I'm looking for. Then the following day, they entered Caesarea. Now Cornelius was awaiting for them when he called his relatives and friends. As Peter was coming in, Cornelius went to him and fell down on his feet and worshipped him. And Peter lifted him up saying, stand up. I myself am also a man. As he walked with, with him, he went and found many people who had come together. Then he said to them, you know how unlawful is it for a Jewish man to, to keep company with or go to one another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common and clean. Therefore, I came out without objection. Now, check here. Let us, let us go to 13. So, Corona said, four days ago, I was fasting. Until this hour, at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house. Behold, a man came before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard. Your arms are remembered in the sight of the Lord. Send therefore, okay, it's fine. I'm going to skip. Let us go straight to 34, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by, by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. The, he is Lord over all. The word, the word you know, which has proclaimed throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism with John preached, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing great and healing all who were oppressed by the Spirit. For God was with him. I'm, I'm going to jump here. 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who had, who had the, the word. May God bless his word. Amen. Hallelujah. I read the longest scripture. I want, you ask, I want us to go back to the scripture from Acts chapter 1. But let us also go back to Acts 6 uh, verse 4. Verse 4 clearly says, the disciple says, we will, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. That was their commitment in, verse, in chapter 6. So we see in Acts 10, Peter 
executing exactly what he committed to. The Bible says he was in prayer and very hungry. Presumably, we'll think that he was fasting. And he was, as he was in prayer, he began to see vision from God. But before we can go to Peter, we see also Cornelius. In another region, he is fasting. Seeking the face of God. God is speaking to two men who are doing the same thing in different regions. He's combining them where he's making them to meet first where spiritually. To execute what, what God has ordained to be executed to the Gentiles. The first ministry of the Holy Spirit to fall upon the Gentiles was because two men, a Gentile and a Jew, were both involved in the ministry of prayer. They prayed in different locations. They raised the altar of prayer in different locations. And God, and God spoke to them differently. The one who has received the Lord Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior, who is Peter, God spoke to him directly. And the other one who was not born again, God used an angel to speak to him. Yet the message was one so that Cornelius and his household can be saved. I want to put it to you today that as you commit yourself to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, of the word and prayer, you have come, you are raising an altar before God, an altar that God will use to make, to make you meet with your destiny helper. Cornelius did not know that there is someone called Peter in his life until he get involved in the ministry of prayer. There are certain breakthroughs that you, there are certain breakthroughs that are aligned to certain people that only when you commit yourself to prayer and fasting you will be able to meet those people physically. Am I talking to someone? Hallelujah. So prayer, we don't pray because there is an urgent need. Acts 6 verse 4, the disciple says, we will, come, we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and what? And prayer, meaning they were was, there was saying, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 is our portion. We shall pray without ceasing. We shall seek the word of God without ceasing. Hallelujah. So we need also to check what happens when we pray. What happens when you pray? What, what happens? Whom do you commun communicate with when you pray? You must first understand this, that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And you must also know that the Holy Spirit came here to confirm and affirm who? Jesus Christ. As you spend time in the word, you are spending time communing with who? With the Holy Spirit. As you pray, your spiritual ears and eyes are open to what God is planning. Hallelujah. Number one, if you want to know what God is planning for your life, go for the word and prayer. Hallelujah. If you want to know what God is planning for your life, go for the word and prayer. What happens when you, when, when you go for the word and prayer? The altar of prayer is the altar of transformation. Are we together? It is where you are what? You are transformed. Many people are not seeing transformation because the altar of prayer is not taken care of properly. If you want your life to be transformed, hook yourself up to the word of God. Know what God is saying concerning your life and concerning your season. You know, there is something that Apostle Peter said here one day when he was ministering about faith. He said, we, are not, we might be in the same world, but in different season. In Britain, as, we, as we're speaking right now, it is winter. We are going for our winter. So you cannot live by somebody else's season. 
Know your season. Have your own revelation concerning your life. Where do you get that revelation concerning your life? Raise your own altar of prayer and the word. That's where your transformation is. Am I talking to you? Can you go to Luke 9, 29? Luke 9, verse 29. Luke 9, verse 29. He said, as he prayed, the appearance of his face altered, and his robe became white and glistering. And his as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered, and his robe became glistering. Check here. Jesus Christ was, was in, the, in, in, in the mount of what? We call it a mount of transfiguration. As he prayed, he was transformed. His face be became what? Became what? Altered. There are certain breakthroughs that are waiting for an altered face. Am I talking to you this, this evening? Your face, until it gets altered and transformed by prayer, cannot open certain doors. There are certain doors that only that face that has been transformed and altered by the word of God can open them. Why? When your face is altered, it altered into the likeness of the word that you are reading, the likeness of the word that you are praying. Who is the word? Jesus Christ. As you pray, you become more like him. Hallelujah. There are, certain, there are certain areas in the spiritual realm where your position, your position in life won't give you breakthrough. Only the authority of Jesus Christ will give you breakthrough. As you pray, as you enter into the realm of transformation by deep prayers and the word, as you are transformed and be more like Jesus Christ, you, uh, you enter into the realm of power and authority. You begin to command things in the heavenlies. They begin to move. Why? Because you have committed yourself to the ministry of the word and prayer continuously. Hallelujah. You know, there are certain things that can happen to us as a group. But 99% of your life needs your personal commitment to the ministry of the word and prayer. Hallelujah. Check here. The altar, right? The altar of prayer is the altar of empowerment. It is the altar of manifestation. In other words, you can never be prayerful and powerless. Peter prayed. As he was praying, he got connected to Cornelius who was praying. As Peter went to Cornelius' house, he walked, he entered the house with the power of the Holy Ghost. The Bible said as he was speaking the words, releasing the words of, in the Bible, the Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles. They were all baptized with the Holy Spirit. Why does it symbolize that? Peter was walking in power. As he opens his mouth, the Holy Spirit confirms his words. Hallelujah. So there is no way that you can be prayerful and be powerless, especially when you are praying the word of God. There is no way that you can stand up and make declarations and they do not come to pass, especially if you are continuously dedicated to the ministry of the word and prayer. Peter did not pray for the Gentiles to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. By the way, they, were, they are the first people outside the Jews to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. After it happened, Peter was cornered by a fellow disciples that how come did you dine with the Gentiles? Peter explained to them what happened when God showed him the sheet filled with animals and when God said to him, do not call what God has clean and common. And they all understood that indeed God has no partiality. I want to put it to you today. There are certain areas in your life that are uncharted. 
There are certain areas in this world that only you can open them, can open those doors, not only for you, but for people around you. You see, Peter, because of his continuous ministry in prayer, he, he was given the first mandate to usher the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles. And they received the power of, of, of the Holy Spirit. I want to put it here, there is something first that is waiting for you, that only you can do it in your, in your family. That only you can do that in your community. Only you can do that among your siblings. There is something that is only waiting for you. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you to commit yourself to the ministry of prayer and the word so that you can do something new in your life. Am, am, am I talking to you tonight? If you are waiting for something new, do something new. That's why Jesus Christ, when he found those who were selling in, 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 in the house of God, the money exchangers, after he, he scattered their tables, after he said, don't you know that my father's house shall be called the house of what? The house of prayer. He did not say the house of worship. Not that worship is not important. He did not say the house of what, but he said, my father's house shall be called what? The house of prayer. Hallelujah. The altar of prayer is the altar of consecration. It's where you are set apart. Hallelujah. You, you know what? Don't, don't, don't be settled with who you are. Don't be comfortable with who you are. Ask yourself, since I have been born, what is there something new that I've ever done? You can't be praying the same tongues for, for 15 years. You know, when you get transformed, when you get consecrated, when you are set apart to be used by God, God gives you a new mandate. I want to put it to you that every new mandate comes with new power. No, you didn't hear me. Every new mandate comes with what? New power. In other words, every new mandate comes with what? New anointing. New levels of authority. New levels of glory. When you spend your time in your altar of prayer, you get consecrated. You get sanctification. You are purified. What purified you? Because of the ministry of the word in you. You will never think the way you used to. You know, things, things that you used to be a victim of, they will be your food. Hallelujah. You know, how would you know that you are growing? When things that used to offend you don't offend you anymore. And when things that used to excite you don't excite you anymore. You know, you, you have entered a new realm of glory where you are, you are you, 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 what matters most to you is the voice of God. Every day you wake up hungry and thirsting for a new mandate, a new direction. Say, Father, I'm up today. When you go to your altar of prayer, when you say amen, you don't just stand up and go. You can't just walk out of that altar until you hear him speak to you. Because you know that you are set aside. You are purified. You are consecrated. There is something that God wants to do through you. Every day, every hour. So after prayer, you know that no, no, no. I cannot just stand up and go. I cannot just say, I'm going now, I amen, and then stand up, open the door, and buy. No. You'll say, Father, I cannot just go without your voice. Talk to me, O oh Lord. Say something to me, O oh Lord. Whatever that you can say, even if you can say, this is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased, it's okay with me as long as I know that I have heard your voice for that day. We cannot be a church 
that get comfortable without hearing the voice of God daily. We cannot be a church that get comfortable without receiving the direction from God daily. We cannot be that church. That's why the disciples, even though they were only 12, but their reason of spending time in the ministry of the word and prayer, they were able to get divine direction from God and they turned the whole world upside down. 12 people, why? They were not comfortable with with. With, with mediocrity, they wanted, they were hungry for God daily. Hallelujah. Say, say I'm hungry for him. Acts 1, verse 14. Acts 1, verse 14. Are, are, we, are we together, church? He said, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. And with the women... And Mary of the mother of and Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Here, when Jesus Christ said to them, Go ye tarry in Jerusalem, you shall receive power. They did not go to Jerusalem and stay, okay, in Wimpy. <laughs> Others maybe were in Spain, Jerusalem. Others maybe were in where, wherever. No. The Bible said they all continued with one accord in prayer and what? Supplication. You see, they activated, they opened the heavens, one, with one with prayer, two, oneness of mind, three, and supplication. Why? They managed to consecrate, they set themselves apart from the affairs of the world and, and continued in the ministry of prayer and the word. Which word? Every word that Jesus Christ taught them. The disciples were sitting there knowing that as long as the Holy Spirit is there, has been promised them, he can only connect with one, with one thing, the word in them. Are we together, church? He can only connect with what? With the word in them. So as you give yourself continuously to the ministry of the word and prayer, believe you me, you don't have to pray, oh, touch me, Holy Spirit. No. I, I've never seen such in the Bible. Nobody prayed for the Holy Spirit to touch him. If they were touched by those who had the Holy Spirit and they received the Holy Spirit. But as you continued in the ministry of the Holy Spirit and prayer, you don't pray for the Holy Spirit to touch you. You, you, you. you develop what you call communion and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And believe you me, you cannot have fellowship with the Holy Spirit and not be empowered. Hallelujah. Am I talking to someone? You cannot have fellowship with the Holy Spirit and not be empowered. As you are empowered by the Holy Spirit, there are certain things that will automatically fall off. For example, the spirit of rejection will fall off. The spirit of fear will fall off. All those other things will fall off. The spirit of anger will fall off. The orphan spirit will fall off. Why? Because he will become your father, your comforter, your empowerer, your everything. You will think of nothing else but God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Acts 2 verse 1. Let us go quickly. I'm loving the word of God. How many of you are loving the word of God? How many of you are loving the word of God? Okay, let us go to point out the altar of prayer is the altar of revelation. Or the ministry of the word and prayer is the ministry of revelation. You see, let us go back to the story that we read again, that we read again of Peter and Cornelius. Cornelius is told, you know, you know I, I was saying, Cornelius just became an instant prophet. He's told... There is, a, there is a man called Simon Peter who is lodging 
at the house of the tenor by the sea in Joppa, go there. Cornelius was not praying for, for the revelation of Peter. He did not, it is not written anywhere that he, he just continuously in the ministry of what? Of prayer and what? And the word. And he also practiced the word. The Bible said he gave alms to those who were in need daily. And as he was praying, it is, it is not, his prayer is not written anywhere. But an angel appeared to him and said, there is someone called Peter who is lodging by the house of Simon the Tenant. Go there. He will give, he will tell you the words that you need to hear. I want to put it to you that you don't, you, some of you, as you turn Romans 8, you see that we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to. But the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. There are certain things that can only be revealed to those who go at deep in prayer and the word. The Holy Spirit, the prayer that you are praying, will, he will tell you the name and the address. Not this false prophets of cell phone number and tomatoes in the fridge. No, 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 no. I'm talking about when God tells you that, that he wants you to, he's not, that's not that there is a purpose of souls to be saved. Why? When Peter went to Cornelius house, the Bible said there were his whole household and friends, they were all saved and were baptized. Hallelujah. You will, you will move in the realm of revelation. As you give yourself in the ministry of the word and prayer, you move in the realm of revelation. You don't pray for revelation. Oh, Father, reveal this to me. No. I always tell people that somebody uh, here came to me one day and said, Pastor, you seem to know everything. Can we call you this name? I said, no. When God reveals things to me, it's not for a position. It's for a relationship. Hallelujah. It's for a what? So in other words, I'm saying, you can be the prophet of your own life. By spending time in prayer with God, because God will reveal to you. He will tell you, uh, go to Wimpy, New Market, you'll find a man sitting by the door wearing this particular suit. This man is in trouble. He's waiting to hear the word that will set him free. Preach to him this word and, reveal, and give him Jesus Christ. As after he's baptized, that man, after he's been baptized, is the one who's got the company. He will connect you and your family to this kind of business. You see, God can set up the breakthrough of the whole family just by the obedience of one person. The Bible said when Philip, when Philip was, was, was on the road, he met the Enoch. And the Holy Spirit said to him, that man, the Enoch, the Ethiopian Enoch, who was the, who was the minister of finance, he does not know what he's reading about. Go to him. He was reading in the book of Isaiah that he was led like a, like a lamb. He spoke not talking about Jesus Christ. Philip went to him. He ministered unto the Ethiopian Enoch. After that, the Ethiopian Enoch said, no, 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 no. You cannot just go. Here is water. Baptize me. After Philip baptized him, the Bible said Philip was taken by the Spirit. He was found in Azuras preaching the word of God. A thousand kilometers away from where he was. Why? He gave himself. The Bible said Philip was a prayerful man. He gave himself to the ministry of prayer and the word. And the Holy Spirit revealed to him those who need his help. There are people that can only be helped by you. Provided you give yourself the ministry of the word and prayer. Hallelujah. There are certain, there are certain people there who are not experiencing certain breakthroughs because we are not going deep enough in prayer. The moment you go deep, you, you, the Holy Spirit will just say to you, go to your gate. While you are standing by the gate, a man will walk to you and say, 
Do you know who's, I, you know what, I need help. Im, the, immediately the man speaks to you, Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. Because the church is not winning souls enough. Why? The ministry of the word and prayer is neglected. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say my altar of prayer is my altar of revelation. Say is where I receive the revealed word of God. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, call to me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Hallelujah. Call to me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. God is waiting for those who will call upon him. There are mighty and great things that only you must see. I believe there are people who went to the grave without knowing what they are called for. They are mighty and great things that did not manifest in their lives. Hallelujah. I declare and decree that you shall not be one of those who, who go to their graves without manifesting mighty and great things. Hallelujah. Say, say I shall not die. I will live and proclaim mighty and great things as they are revealed to me by the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, your altar of prayer, as you get the ministry of the word and prayer, is where you are preserved. You know, whenever I go, whenever I go to people, I always say this, that I know that I'm not preserved because I sanitized or I social distanced. No. I'm preserved by Psalm 91. We who dwell in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. As you dwell there in the ministry of prayer and the word, as you declare his word over your life and over your family, you release, you release what you call the altar of preservation upon your family. And yourself. There was a time that I came back. I was traveling and I came back. I felt that you know, my body was being attacked. I felt all the symptoms of this thing. And I said to my body, my Bible said, by his stripes, I have been healed more than 2,000 years ago. So my healing has been waiting for me before I was born. So body, you shall not be deceived by any virus. You are pro-life. The next morning when I woke up, I was fine. Why? I live in the ministry or in the altar of what? Preservation. Hallelujah. Say my prayer life releases preservation for me and my family. Do you want me to stop here? M must I finish? Amen, Pastor Nzako. We shall, we, sh we shall continue. You know, if you want divine intervention in your life, divine intervention, pursue 
the ministry of the word and prayer. You know, Second Chronicles 20, it speaks about Joseph. When he was surrounded by the great army, he knew that, he prayed that we are powerless against these people. We cannot do much about these people. But what I love about King Joseph is that he called for a national day of prayer instantly. He activated the ministry of the word and prayer. And Psalms was also quoted. They said, they also said, it is written that believe what your prophets, you shall be what? And you shall prosper. They activated the ministry of the word and prayer. Immediately when they did that, they also activated the ministry of worship. God brought to them great deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you want great deliverance in your life? Do you want great intervention in your life? I want to put it to you. Activate the ministry of the word and prayer. You will see the greatest form of intervention you've never seen in your life. Hallelujah. Let us go to Hebrews 4 verse 16. Hebrews 4 verse 16. He say, let us therefore come boldly to the throne room of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Who comes? You. If I can paraphrase this scripture, this scripture is saying, activate your ministry of the word and prayer that you may obtain mercy and grace in time of need. What, what, is, what, is, what is the throne room? It is where you meet with God. It is the altar that is raised by you through obedience and what? And boldness. Your tongue, your lips carries, you harbor in you the greatest intervention in mankind. The Bible said when King Herod killed James, he saw that it pleased the Jews. He continued to seize Peter also and throw him in jail, planning to kill him the next day. And the Bible says, and prayers were offered for Peter by the church. And I believe that the church was not just praying. The church was praying, declaring the word of God. Because the angels of God are only activated by the word of God. As we tell Psalm 3 verse 20. That the angel of the Lord performs in great strength. Hearkening unto the word, the word of God. And the angel was, was, was dispatched and released Peter from jail. You see, there are certain interventions, great interventions, that can never be activated until the church pray. You see, I've, I've got a Facebook account. One of the things that I didn't like in the Facebook account is when the church was entangled in the affairs of this world. That was what I saw on Facebook. Everybody was commenting. If the church is saying the government must give us our rightful position. No, 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 no. no. I said, do you know who you are? The church is ecclesia. What is ecclesia? Those who are called 
to govern in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. So you see, Ecclesia, even is the, when the word ecclesia come from, come from the Greek word, the governors. You see, Greek used to have, they still have a lot of islands. Every time when they gather together, all the governors of those islands, they come, they gather together and receive instruction from the prime minister on how to govern all the islands. So we are ecclesia. We are called to govern spiritually. When we govern spiritually through the ministry of the word and prayer, God intervenes in each and every government. His will will be done. But when the church lowered itself to the position of people, we miss the mark. Hallelujah. Change it spiritually. It will change you on earth. Let your will be done here on earth as it is where? In heaven. Let your will be done where? Here on earth as it is where? In heaven. In other words, when you change it spiritually, it gets changed where? Here on earth. Am I talking to someone tonight? Am I talking to someone tonight? We'll stop here. We're going to continue with this sermon. I want you to stand up. Wherever you are, those who are watching me through media, I, 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 I want you to, to, to make this declaration. You know, God honors those who humbly ask for his help. That, Father, I struggle in this area of the word. I struggle in prayer. Holy Spirit, tonight as I surrender myself to you, give me the power and the ability to activate my ministry of the word in prayer so that I can be an effective soldier in the kingdom of God. I don't want to be one of those who will be commenting with the world. I don't want to be one of those We'll be frustrated with the world. Father, I want to be entangled in your matters. Not the matters of the world. Hallelujah. Can you all pray? Father, you have spoken. We thank you, mighty God. Oh, yes, Lord, we give you the glory. We honor you, mighty God, for the ministry of the word and prayer. That Heavenly Father, as we recommit ourselves as a church to the ministry of the word and prayer, we thank you, mighty God, for the new fellowship with the Holy Spirit. The fellowship that is based in your purpose, not a need-based fellowship. Heavenly Father, I declare and decree that, Father, we shall not come to you because we got needs. We shall not come to you because of our private needs. Heavenly Father, I declare and decree that from tonight onwards, we shall activate our ministry of the word and prayer because of the kingdom needs. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, that's why we can pray that, Father, let your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because the ministry of the word in prayer focuses mighty God. God, in implementing the will of God here on earth as it is in heaven. Father God, we thank you. We give you the glory, mighty God. Pirabo sondi makasi atem. Mbesandi mbosa rebekesha. Mbesandi zitare bekoza tikasha. Mbesandi mbosa ribakasi atem. Misinda mbosa ribaka rimbaseti ko. Perioka zita bekesha. Mbesandi mbosa ribakesha. Misiande mbeko pariko za ribekesi atem. Misati ko za ribekesha. Misondo ko za ribekesi atem. Misandi ko za Ribakasha, Missiande, Becosa Ricassem, Shiroca Passande, Sandy Bocos, Saribekesh, Missiet Rose, Soribacashat, Pe 
Mary calls, Zoti Bakas, Besandi Mbako, Zoti Bakash, Ignite us, mighty God, Ignite us, mighty God, Ignite us, mighty God, Ignite us, mighty God, for the ministry of the word and prayer, Ignite us, mighty God, for the ministry of the word and prayer, Holy Spirit, we are dependent upon you, Ignite this church, Ignite everyone wherever they are, Father, Ignite them for the ministry of the word and prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Mesandi Mbakon, Parikol, Zotibakasha, Perikos Yota, Pezira Kasiat, Mesitako, Parikol, Zoti Karabesh, Mesandi Kol, Zoti Karabesh, Mesinda Mbeko, Zori Bekesiata, Peraka Zitoka, Peshendi Mos Yoribakasha. Oh Lord, we thank you. We shall pray without ceasing. We declare and decree. First Thessalonians five seventeen. We shall pray without ceasing. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare this word. Let this word that I'm declaring that Father, the ministry of prayer and the word is established in this ministry. We shall pray without ceasing. We shall obey your word. We shall live by your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we know that as we dwell in your word, we are guided by your power. In Jesus' name, mighty God, we thank you. Hallelujah. 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 It is all about the ministry of the word and prayer. God bless you.